So in this video I would like to talk about ancestral healing. It is interesting that ancestral healing and even the knowledge and information about the importance of what we inherit from our ancestors is not considered important. In fact, even the knowledge is greatly lacking in terms of healing and healing schools, personal development and psychotherapy. And of course, when I use the word ancestral healing or even ancestry, people are imagining um, the ancestors who lived two or three hundred years ago that didn't have technology and lived in little huts somewhere um, or lived in a cave, sort of the ancestors from, from long, long ago. But of course, our ancestry starts with mum and dad. So that wasn't really long ago. And so why is that important? A very reductionist view of the world sees us all as being an island, an island that is not connected to anything else, which is one of the reasons why um, we have many issues with, re with regards to sustainability and the development of nations and industrialization and the lack of sustainability. It's because of the separation that's been created between ourselves and nature, as if nature is something that sits outside of ourselves as if the great ocean and the sky and the earth is not a part of us. Every single atom that we have in our body came from the earth and then before that it came from our very sun and from the stars. And so this idea that we are islands and our consciousness just sits in our heads and it's separated from everyone and everything else is a very false idea and it, and it belongs to this very reductionist view that wants to reduce everything down to non-conscious, non-sentient um, molecules that are not, is not related to anything else. As if consciousness itself sprang forth from matter. And it's really the other way around, that matter sprang forth from consciousness. And there are different levels of consciousness. So when we're born, we are born into a story that is already being told. So we're born into a story that is already being told. So the story of your family and the story of your ancestors has been told over many, many generations. And then one more sentence in that book of life, the book of the ancestors, is the addition of your name. And then came Peter into this world. And then came Joanna into this world and then came Nkosi into this world, and then came Frederick into this world, and then came Graziella into this world. And so that is the addendum to the story. So the story is a living story. It is an active story. It has many players. It has belief systems. It has many dramas in it. It has many truths in it. So it is an active story that is actively being told, not only at the moment of our conception, but all the way through gestation and to birth. So it's not as if we were born onto a clean slate. We were born into an active story that was being told at the time of our birth. And so it behooves us to look at, well, what is the story of our family? What is the story of your family? We are the hard workers. We are the ones that survived. We're the ones who had to leave. We had to leave. We're the ones who had to leave. And so perhaps you come from a family of immigrants. Perhaps you came from a family where your grandparents or great-grandparents were refugees. Perhaps they fled war or famine. Perhaps they left the the pogroms, perhaps they left the Holocaust, or perhaps you are of mixed blood or have indigenous blood in you, and it is your ancestors that had to receive the domination from colonizers or other settlers that came into their area. So what is the story of your family? What's really important to understand about the story of the family is that we ourselves have a strong tendency to live out that story without even knowing it. 
So perhaps the story of our family is the family that has been cursed, or the family that does the cursing, or perhaps the family that has been cursed and has done cursing in, in revenge, or in response to that. Perhaps it is the, the family that um, hates a particular group of people. Perhaps for many generations the ethnicity that you were born into hated this other ethnicity and then received hatred back. And so when we begin to understand what is the fundamental story that we were born into, then we can begin to look at our lives in a different way and understand that many aspects of that story we have lived out. Or we strive very hard to live out the opposite of that story. So the story of my ancestry is that of people who were downtrodden, poor, discriminated against, faced great, great hardship, then we may have a great drive to be everything but our roots, to be everything but having a sense of belonging to that group. And so in reality, what can happen is that we can begin to mimic the behavior of those who actually oppressed our ancestors. We can have disdain for our own ancestors, disdain for our nationality, disdain for the religion that we belong to, disdain for our ethnicity, disdain for our own race. So internalized self-hatred, internalized hatred of where we came from. And this is very, very common. It is extremely common. So that's one aspect of the story that we've been born into. But let's make that more personal. What is your mother's story? What is your mother's story? What is your father's story? What is the story that they were telling about their lives? What was the story that they were living? I'm the woman who gave up everything for my husband. I'm the, the man who gave up my career in order to marry this, this woman. We were dating at college and she got pregnant so I had to go out to work and I could no longer become a doctor. So what is the story of your mother and father? We're the ones who survived this war and we met each other and started to form a family. Mm -hmm. Or I'm the one whose father died when I was six years old and I've had to, to battle it out and be strong ever since. And so, if your father has had to battle it out and be strong, or if your mother has had to give up all of her dreams, how easy it then is it for you to manifest and create what you want and to dare have more than your own mother? Or to have more than your father but to give up this notion of having to battle for it. How easy would it be for you to allow it to come to you easily if your father had to battle and to fight for everything that he had? What if he had to crawl up from poverty in order to create what he has created and you allow it then to be easy? The ancestral story is much deeper than that. Not only is epigenetics revealing that uh, traumas are passed down from generation to generation through the DNA and RNA and the, the on-off switches can, um, can be activated in order to make us more susceptible to various illnesses and, and diseases. That's a new science that's emerging. But outside of that science, within, within the realm of family constellations, and within the realm of ancestral healing, within shamanic healing and shamanic traditions, we've seen how feelings and um, illnesses, tragedies, traumas, and life stories can be passed from one generation to the next. Especially when there has been an, mm, an indelible mark that's been left on the family. For example, perhaps many of your ancestors have been in the priesthood. Perhaps many have been nuns or monks or um, other important figures within a religious organization. 
and so that religion and its edicts and its uh, dogmas leave an indelible mark upon the family and so there is a bond there to an organization that can exist without us even knowing. I think back a few years ago now to when I was working with someone who explained this pattern of making lots of money becoming bankrupt, making lots of money and becoming bankrupt and then when I inquired about brothers and sisters knowing that um, this person's siblings were also doing the same thing making money becoming bankrupt making money becoming bankrupt and that there was within the broader family a higher incidence of alcoholism and suicide and so inquiring as to where the family were, were from originally going back a few generations I said so what happened on the land that these great grandparents of yours had what was grown there? And he looked at me and it was unsure as to why I was asking. And I said, well, what was grown there? He said, cotton. I said, who picked the cotton? And that's when he went quiet. I said, how is that for you that your great-grandfather was a slave owner? Where is the burden of kilt in the family? Who's carrying that? It would seem that the great-grandchildren are carrying that very clear. These stories are very clear. Similarly, on working with individuals whose grandparents, great-grandparents were slaves, have difficulty in allowing themselves to be truly free. There are many individuals who are the descendants of slaves who are living their lives as if they are slaves. Many African-American women are enslaved through single motherhood of having to work two or three jobs in order to provide for their children. So their living circumstances are no different to how it, how it was for their great-great-grandmothers or great-grandmother and in some, for some people who are old enough even for their grandmother. And so the women raised the children on their own without the fathers because they were often separated in slavery and so very many descendants of the African slaves, both in the Caribbean and the United States and other countries such as Brazil, are living life as if they are still in slavery. That is apart from the political and the racial issues that are also in, in place and still existing. So I'm not assigning all of the conditions of their life and, 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 and fewer opportunities for education simply to um, the ancestral legacy but there is a, a part of the inner world that is still living out the story of the ancestors. The whole point to me mentioning this is that we are all born into a story that is currently being told, that is actively being told. Mm -hmm. And so the deeper question is, do we first of all have the courage to face the story of our family? It is an energy. It, it can be seen in the auric field. And for some of us it is quite a heavy energy. It's a heavy, grey, molasses-like energy. And we have cords coming out of our chakras that, that connect us to, to all of our ancestors. It is a heavy energy. And we need to become cognizant of it. We need to be able to feel it in order to move out of it. That is why I've also seen that many individuals who are very wealthy, for example, who come from backgrounds of abject poverty, perhaps their parents were alcoholics, perhaps their parents were refugees, can create and amass great wealth, but have absolutely no love in their lives. No quality relationships, no quality friendships, where the emotional connection and the depth of connection even to their own children can be missing. because the inner work or the inner statement needs to be please bless me mother if I have the courage to be happier than you please bless me father if I have the courage to have more than you and so we are very loyal to our family story whilst externally our life may not look as if it is mimicking the story of our ancestors internally there is a loyalty and there is a representation of that. I am the oppressed one. 
I'm the one that didn't belong. I'm the one who had to run away. I'm the one that had to be the underdog in society. I'm the one that was uh, cast out from this religion. I'm the one who was. I'm the one, etc. And so the feelings, feelings of not belonging, feelings of having to work hard, feelings of being trapped in slavery, feelings of being all alone, feelings of not having enough, are very real feelings that pass from generation to generation. And so with ancestral healing we start looking at the, the story of the family. What is the active script? What is the story that has predetermined the lives and the quality of life of all of the ancestors that came before you, starting with mum and dad? And so what is the story that has been dictating your life? What is the story? I have no country. I have no family. I have no place in society. I am less than or I am nothing. Or my people are the bad people. We're the ones who do bad in the world. We're the ones who went out and colonized. We're the ones who went out and enslaved. We're the ones who did those bad things to those people over there. Therefore now I must pay my penance. Are you paying penance on behalf of your ancestors? Are you carrying shame on behalf of your ancestors? Do you limit your own joy because your great-grandmother was a slave? And so part of this inner work is about honoring history as it is, knowing that each of us that comes to this planet, the very life that we are leading, the very life that we are living was created by that history. And so whilst I am not saying that it was okay to colonize and to enslave and that it was okay to, um, to benefit from ill-gotten gain, I'm not saying any of that, I'm saying, but we do need to acknowledge what is and bow to it with respect. So one of the things that I mentioned in one of my books, um, The Healing of Individuals, Families and Nations, uh, written under the name John Payne, is that in understanding this, I realized that with my father coming from a colonizing nation and my mother coming from a colonized nation and being colonized that both, um, if you like, the victim and the perpetrator live within me. The colonizer and the colonized live within me. So if I stand back and say, oh no, the British Empire, it's all bad, it's wrong, it should never have happened. The moment I say it should never have happened, I cease to exist. I deny my right to exist. And I have a right to exist because I'm here. So just as anyone who is mixed race or anyone who um, is a mixture of colonizer and colonized or anyone who's living in the new world. Mm -hmm. So let's say you are living in the new world. Let's say you're living in the United States or Australia or New Zealand or Canada or Argentina Tina and Brazil. And let's say that you are um, half Aboriginal and half white, half Maori and half white part Native American and part white. If none of that should have happened, then you deny your right to exist. And you're here. I'm here. You're here. We're all here. And it is through honoring the history and bowing to the suffering of others. That's not the same as sanctioning it. That's not the same as saying it's okay. But it's about being okay with what was and realizing that often it is the suffering of others, it is the story of others, it is the history of others that leads to the creation of ourselves. And that's what needs to be accepted. And to bow into that with deep respect. And that is the beginning of the path of freedom. And there's so much more to say about ancestral healing. That's all for now.